I call Sue Moroni. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Pleasure to rise and speak to the Social Security Extension of Young Persons Services and Remedial Matters Amendment Bill at its first reading, um, a bill that Labor is prepared to support through to Select Committee, and one that we will be very interested in hearing submissions on because we do have reservations about supporting uh, this bill because, um, as with many of the bills that this government brings in, it has some good aspects and then it has some real very dubious um, aspects to it. And, and this is another one of those bills that has both things going on with it. And for us, we'll be weighing up um, where the benefits come in and uh, we, we, what is best for our society and our community in total. So the part of it that um, we can uh, readily support is the extension to 19-year-olds of the youth service and the wraparound benefits and supports, um, additional educational opportunities, um, uh, maybe the additional $10 that is tagged with that, although um, sometimes that, that seems um, a, a little laughable. Um, but nonetheless, um, I guess uh, we prefer the incentive type approach to the, um, the punitive sort of approach that this government is want to take uh, with regard to people who are, have fallen on hard times and are having very difficult um, issues that they are grappling with. That has been the mode of operation of this government is to blame the victims and to blame people um, who have, have least opportunities in their lives. So I guess from that perspective, we um, are pleased to see that there is an incentive-based, a more of an incentive-based approach with this bill. However, the part that we are very concerned about, that we will want to um, explore through the select committee process, is the idea that um, young people, um, and most of these young people will be um, parents of young children, and I guess the reason why I'm Keen to, uh, keen to have spoken in this debate is that many of those people will in fact be young women. They will be young women. The vast majority of people being subjected to these mechanisms will be young women with young children. And so the idea that they're going to be put through some kind of risk rating process fills me with dread. And the reason it fills me with dread is because I also happen to be Labor's ACC spokesperson. And women's spokesperson. <laughs> and, and, and haven't we seen the shambles of risk rating under this government when it comes to the motor vehicle ACC registration levies? Um, and that's the sort of mentality that's going to be applied potentially again, but this time to people. So I just want to rehearse, because we, this is a major, a, a significant part of this bill, Mr Speaker, remind the public what has transpired when the government has applied this risk rating approach to motor vehicles recently. It's been an utter shambles. It has turned out to be utter chaos. They have got the risk rating wrong of at least 24 makes and models of cars, and that's been discovered in just the first three weeks of the scheme being implemented. Now, the reason I raise this is that if they can get it so wrong with something that is relatively straightforward, actually, and that is the safety of vehicles, then when it comes to assessing and doing risk rating on people's lives, how on earth is that going to go? Will it turn out to be the slow motion car wreck that that government has proven to have brought about in the area of ACC? Because, yes, it would be embarrassing, Minister, I agree that the shambles that's happened in ACC has been absolutely embarrassing for the government. And what I'm saying to the Minister is please do not have that embarrassment visited on our young people. Because it is the same, it is actually the same model. It's that, that idea that um, there's an actuarial kind of assessment that can be made and that it's going to be a perfect science. And in this instance, 
it's not just going to be applied to motor vehicles. You know, that's bad enough, actually, because that affects people's levy payments that they're paying for car registration. But in this instance, this is going to affect young people's lives and the tags that they carry with them throughout their lives due to that government's idea that you can just kind of apply an insurance model, um, actuarial kind of assessment, and deem someone to be high risk or, um, or low risk of being a beneficiary. It gave me great cause for concern when I heard um, the previous speaker, Alfred Naro, um, use that model to tell us that apparently, on average, 18 to 19-year-olds who are on a benefit today, on average, will be on a benefit under their assessment process for 30 years. What? On average? That's what he said. That's what he said. No, he said 30 years. Well, go and have a look at the Hansard. Did he get it wrong? He said 30 years. Um, but that is, you know, and again, this just fills me with dread because if they're going to make those mistakes in first reading speeches about using this risk assessment tool, how wrong are they going to get it when they actually roll it out and apply it to people's lives? And, and what evidence are they using? to make these decisions, because I think all of us hearing that figure um, know that this can't possibly be true. Because for an 18 to 19 year old today, um, on average, that all of them on average are going to end up being on a benefit for 30 years, means that some of them must be on a benefit for 60 years in order for to balance out the ones that are going to be on a benefit for one year. And that is just an extraordinary claim to make. It's an extraordinary claim to make. So um, I think that, that these are the reasons why we will be uh, putting a lot of scrutiny on this bill at select committee stage, because this tool that um, the government is going to use to make an assessment of um, how low risk or high risk people are at the tender age of um, 18 or 19, and therefore what their future is going to look like, how bleak it's going to be or not, um, given their record in using risk rating um, models in other settings, uh, is something that we will take a lot of notice on. Well, the member says you can't compare. I think that's a really hopeful statement from him. He's hoping this won't turn into the slow motion car wreck that the ACC levies has. And I understand that because if I was in his position, I would be deeply embarrassed about that as well. But, well, what I'm pointing out here is that um, they might think it's funny that it's happened to people paying their ACC levies on their motor vehicle registrations. But when it comes to putting labels on young people about what their future looks like, then the, the, the government needs to be very, very careful. We know they're already prepared to label a lot of our primary school children failures when they are just five or six years of age. And um, this is another extrapolation perhaps of that whole idea that you know you give people these, mod these, these labels based on um, goodness knows what data and what information, and we know that that can harm them for the rest of their lives. So we will be looking into this very, um, very carefully. I also want to um, raise the issue that my, uh, my colleague Carmel Cipollone raised, and that is the issue about the people who come off benefits, where do they go? The government doesn't seem to want to know. It would seem that, um, and, and I, I haven't seen these figures myself recently, but um, Carmel Cipollone talked about uh, roughly 12,000 people coming off benefit, but only, was it 2,600? 2,410. 2,410 finding their way to a job. So what's happened to the rest of them? That's, that's about, what is it, about 28% only? About 20% of them finding their way to a job. What's happening to the other 80%? Is this the no, no, reason? No, 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 no. Well, these are the figures. I'll put them on the table. These are the figures of the minister herself. These are the figures, and she's getting very agitated. And, and I think it's because we've had a, a, a really important point here. What's happening to the rest of them? Is this the reason why Order. the food banks in every town and every city in New Zealand have got um, more clients? 
Because they're coming off the they're coming off the benefit, all right, and the government's going, well, isn't that great? Well, if they're ending up at the food bank, no, it's not. And if they're ending up sleeping on the street, no, it's not. And if they're ending up being the endless stream of people that are coming in through MPs' offices saying they can't afford their housing anymore, Sorry then to no, interrupt it's the member, not. But their time has expired.